Hey everyone, welcome back to Legacy TV. If you're new here, my name is Helena and I am the host of this channel. Each week I have the amazing opportunity to share with you a variety of different marine-centered topics and I love to do these videos for you because I love to share this information and selfishly I get a lot out of it too. Alright, enough chit chat, let's get on to today's video. Whale Falls. Whale falls were first discovered by scientists aboard the DSV Alvin in 1987, when they stumbled upon a 20 meter long skeleton at the bottom of the ocean. Since then, it's been determined that whale falls share 11 species with hydrothermal vents and 20 species with cold seeps. These findings suggest that whale falls serve as an evolutionary stepping stone for species as they descend down the continental slope towards the deep sea vent and seep communities. Funny enough, whale fall communities are the perfect example of zero waste living, as not a single part of the whale carcass goes unconsumed. In fact, there are certain species that will go as far as to extract the lipids from inside of the bone. Now, let's walk through each of the four phases that occur in a whale fall. Their communities, the duration, and their importance to the decomposition process. First, we have the mobile scavenger stage. In this phase, soft tissue is removed from the carcass by large active necrophages, which are organisms that obtain their nutrients from decomposing carcasses. Think vultures of the ocean. Some examples of necrophages found during this time are a variety of different crustaceans, Pacific sleeper sharks, and hagfish. The mobile scavenger stage can last anywhere between four to five months and one to two years, depending on the size of the carcass. Following the mobile scavenger stage is the enrichment opportunistic stage. Once the soft tissue has been removed from the whale carcass and a majority of the large necrophage organisms have left, they are replaced by a dense assemblage of heterotrophic macrofauna, more specifically crustaceans and polychaetes who are attracted to the organically rich sediment surrounding the mostly stripped skeleton. The polychaetes form a white bacterial mat that resembles something sort of like a white grass turf. The enrichment opportunistic stage can last anywhere from four months to one and a half years on the seafloor. It is also during this stage that organisms begin to dig into the lipid rich bones of the whale skeleton. Whale bone lipids can make up to between five to 8% of the whale's total body mass. That means in a whale that was 36,000 kilograms, there may be up to two to 3,000 kilograms of lipids. Next, we have the sufophilic stage, which is arguably one of the most ambiguous phases of all of the whale fall decomposition processes. And this is because it can last anywhere from two to 51 years. During this stage, an assemblage of chemolithoautotrophs, which are microbes that utilize chemosynthesis, colonize the bones and sediments as sulfide is emitted from anaerobic tissue decay. This fosters free living or endosymbiotic bacterial methanotrophs, which are bacteria that feed on methane. Macrofaunal communities during this stage can be huge and exceed 30 to 40,000 individuals. And finally, the last step of whale fall decomposition is known as the reef stage, and it is the least understood stage of all. This is primarily due to how difficult it is to conduct any sort of research due to the sufophilic stage's potentially long duration. All right, everyone, that's all for today's video. I hope you learned a lot and had a whale of a good time doing so. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, make sure to subscribe to our channel, like this video and share it with your friends and family. And don't forget to leave a comment down below with questions, comments, or ideas for future topics that you would like covered. All right, everyone, until next time, bye.